Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who have watched me before, or been here before. And in today's video, I am going to be making some more DIY gesso. I did over a year ago, I did this gesso, which was made with baby powder and talc. And uh, a lot of people wanted some different recipes that didn't include talc or baby powder uh, for health reasons, which is perfectly acceptable. And so I wanted to, you know, make a bunch of different kinds of gesso, DIY gessos. The reason why I did a dollar store gesso and why I used baby powder was because I wanted to start with a gesso that was very simple for people to wrap their minds around. Um, you know, people usually, the reason why people would make their own gesso is because gesso is very expensive. Um, you can get in deals and stuff like that, of course, but it is quite expensive. And uh, so a lot of people make their own. So I did the basic dollar store, cheapest kind of ingredients. Um, baby powder, white glue, white paint. That is why I did that, and it was a dollar store DIY. So many people had questioned why I even bothered using talc. Now I have filmed a video using cornstarch in the place of talc. So I will put the link to that video right there. And that is using cornstarch, as I said. And so with gesso, what you need is you need binder, you need a filler, and you need pigment. The pigment you don't need. Uh, many people can, um, lots of times when we think of gesso, we use white. And a lot of people, a lot of artists will use white gesso for their white paint. Uh, but you can make ge black gesso. Um, you can also buy black gesso. You can make any color of gesso you want. And there's also clear gesso. I am going to be working on a clear DIY gesso in the future as well. For this video, we are going to be using Plaster of Paris. So this is, for as far as the DIY gesso goes, this is probably the closest you will get to actual store-bought gesso. A lot of people will use the marble dust or chalk dust that you, you know, that people use to line the tennis courts and whatever. Um, so that is another thing you can use. This I got at Michael's. So this isn't too hard to find, and I know some people can get this in their dollar store. I cannot get it in my dollar store. I'm in Canada, so um, lots of people say, oh, go to this dollar whatever and get it here. And I'm like, I'm in Canada. I don't even, I haven't even heard of that store. So you will want that for this specific gesso. This is going to be the filler. And because it's white and it dries white, it also works as the pigment. So we don't need to be quite as um, concerned with using our white paint for pigment. When you are getting pigment though, do not use expensive white paint. You don't need to. Uh, cheaper dollar store or craft brands will work just fine. So if you don't want to go to the dollar store, which is this, I made this just so over a year ago and it's still fine. Still works good. If you don't want to use this, Another option that's just a little bit higher quality is going to the craft section at a hobby store. Not the fine art section, the craft section. And these paints are really good too. This one would be like the most budget, like this is uh, Michael's. I, oh, maybe it's not. I'm not sure if that's Michael's or not, but that's where I got it from. Apple Barrel, Ceramcoat, Americana. They're really good brands um, of craft paint and they're not, they're not low quality. So you could use those but they're still cheaper than, say, Liquitex Professional Line or Golden Professional Line. Don't, don't go and use those. You don't need to. So I do want to do a disclaimer first. For my, especially for my two previous gessos that I've made with the baby powder and the cornstarch, I will not be using those on any of my paintings that I sell or that I show. Uh, I have some paintings that I sell for about $3,000, and because I don't know exactly how they age over time, I don't feel comfortable in using that and possibly selling a painting because any painting I show is um, is up for sale, really. And so I, I would not want someone to buy it and then, you know, 10 years down the road, eh, sorry. Uh, so I, I use um, either this Liquitex Professional 
brand or I buy um, a little bit more affordable option from curries.com which is a Canadian site and there's lots of different gessos that you can use that are perfectly acceptable for um, long-term use and whatnot. What I do use my DIY gesso for, for the um, cornstarch, the one with the cornstarch and the one with the baby powder is for my art journals or for demonstration pieces where I am I have a canvas and I'm teaching a class and I'm just using the canvas to teach different techniques and demonstrating things and it's not a painting and it's just not going to be used for anything. That way I don't have to use my expensive store-bought gesso and waste it on that when I could be using it for a really, you know, good painting I want to do. Uh, so that's just a disclaimer. I didn't put that in my first DIY dollar store gesso video and uh, I had a lot of people telling me things. So what you're going to do is you're going to need a container and that you're going to mix this in. Also, you want to just mix up a little batch because you're not sure um, how it will age over time. Depending, it, That depends on how well you seal your container that you're holding it in or your environment, humidity, whatever. Uh, so just kind of keep an eye on that and be aware of that as well. This one has stored for over a year, and I just have to keep uh, stirring it up when I go to use it again. I don't know about the cornstarch gesso. I don't know how it stores, because I haven't had a chance to store it yet. I just finished making it. The Plaster of Paris, because it's more of the actual, you know, gesso, I am going to, I'm, I'm tempted to say that it will age better, although, the other ones age fine. I do know some people that have used Plaster of Paris um, for 14 years making their own gesso, or I don't know them, I've heard of them um, online and whatnot, and they've, you know, you've been using it for 14 years and no problems at all. The other thing you're going to want is a container to stick your gesso in, to store it in. These little things you can get, I think, for a dollar at Michael's, and they are actually made for slime that kids would store their slime in. My daughter, I have a daughter that's 10, and she makes a lot of slime. And so these kind of have to be airtight for the slime. So I'm going to go ahead and say that this is good for gesso. The other thing you can use that's a really good size, especially for the recipe that I'm doing, because I you only want to make you know, small batches of this, especially if you haven't made it before. You want to see how it's going to store. Eight, these eight florid ounces, uh, this chalk, this was chalk paint that I got at Michael's, and there's lots of different, you know, these they come in these little smaller containers. This is a really good size. These are both eight ounces. And uh, oh, an old Mod Podge here is another container I have, eight ounces again. This one is a little bit bigger. This was 16 ounces, so I have some gesso in that. So all of these will be good. I have some gesso paste in this. This is a little bit heavier body. You want something that you can you can feel pretty safe screwing on and you know so if it's used for paint or Mod Podge you know that it should have a good seal on it um, as long as it's not cracked or whatever. So uh, this was just white paint that I've already made. You also want to use a measuring cup. So I am doing three parts to one part. So you can do this in any, same as the cornstarch recipe that I have on the other video, just whatever part you're using. If you want to use a cup, then you're going to do, you know, the cup of each of those three parts. So I'll put the recipe below, but I'm going to tell you specifically what I'm doing and the size I like to do. So the one part is one part plaster of Paris, one part white glue, one part hot water, maybe. Okay, so the, the hot water is, um, I know some people, this is kind of my own little thing, so I'll explain that in a second. And so you have those three things, those are the one part, and I am gonna put this down in the description. The three parts are the white paint, okay? With, when you make gesso, you don't have to worry about being exact. You can really tweak this to kind of work for the gesso texture that you like. The other thing with pigment, that's up to you how much pigment you want. Uh, white paint does have some binder in it. It does have some glue. So that provides some glue because you do need some binder in this, right, to stick it to the canvas um, and to stick it to each other. So paint, acrylic paint does have some binder in it. I am going to be using some glue. 
So that is going to be my binder. I'm not going to worry about the binding part of the acrylic paint, which means I don't have to worry so much if I have the right amount of the white paint because I'm only using it for pigment. And I'm not concerned whether or not I want to, I, that it's super white. And because I'm using Plaster of Paris and this dries white, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be just fine with the amount of white I want to use. It's going to be pretty opaque, I think, even if I don't have the exact amount, the, the three parts of white paint. Um, what you do want to be careful with is the filler. You do want to use the right amount of filler. I mean, it doesn't have to be exact, exact, because, again, you can make some heavier gesso and you can make some thinner gesso. Uh, for gesso paste or something that you want to be able to build up texture on, use a stencil and still like almost like a light modeling paste. Um, you can add more filler to that and you will get that. So, but, but you do need to have a certain amount of filler in there, otherwise it's just going to be too runny and, and it's just not going to work. So that you do want to just kind of, you can tweak, but you do need to have a certain amount. Whereas the pigment, you really, you don't even need to put in any pigment really. And I am going to be uh, doing a clear DIY gesso in the future as well. And while I'm at it, um, I'm going to just let you know that I'm going to be doing another DIY gesso that uses latex house paint. So we're going to see how that goes and then I'm going to compare them all and that's going to be in the future. So just make sure that if you are interested in that, that you do subscribe to me and you click the little notification bell so you know when that's coming up. And I do want to have it up in the next month or two, um, all of that. But I do need to give this all, all this gesso a chance to sit and store and so that I can tell you guys, yeah, you do need to mix this up or no, it's really good. It stays mixed up good. So let's get started. Right away, I am going to put in a quarter cup. Uh, cornstarch, not so much, but baby powder and talc. Wouldn't be a bad idea to use a mask just because this can get, you know, dusty. Uh, same with marbling dust or whatever you're going to use. And some gloves, it wouldn't hurt. So let's put those on now because clearly I didn't use them the last video I did, as you can see. And I do like to, um, for the binder part, I just like to use glue and then I don't have to worry about, you know, have I used enough paint to be my binder. I don't really want to have to worry about that. It's just simple to go and buy some glue. And in the first DIY gesso, wow, well, this is really not coming out. In the first DIY gesso I made, I used dollar store glue because again, it was specifically a dollar store DIY gesso. And so I used dollar store glue and it works good and I'm still using that gesso. Um, uh, I used it on, in an art journal just the other day. Uh, also, make sure you don't use the same containers, same tools for food as you do for art things. You don't want to do that. I'm a little bit hesitant to scoop this out because this has actually got some stuff in it, but I think um, I can just scoop it out with something else. See, I'm not, I, you don't need to be exact. Don't, don't feel like it's one of these things where it's like, oh, I screwed up, this whole batch is done. It is not like that at all. Um, and you can, as you go, you can kind of tweak it. And that's where I said the water. Because I do have some water available. Um, distilled is preferred because that will just stay uh, longer, better. Um, and you might want to make it a little bit more runny for you. When I did the cornstarch, I didn't actually add any water because I felt it was the consistency I wanted. And so that's why I also don't add the water like you would with cooking. You'd mix it in first and like with the things, but I add water at the end because I, I want to see what the consistency is going to be like. And then you'll need something to stir that with. So I have a little spatula to scrape it out and I have a little wooden spoon that I scrape for the end of it. A lot of you people, well, not you specifically, whoever you are watching, but there was a lot of people who watched my first, they were very upset with the tool I used to stir the gesso. And I don't mind positive critiques, but I don't know. I don't know. People are very entertaining. I got to say, um, I'm just like, what does it matter that I stirred it with? But on YouTube, it matters. Just FYI for those of you who, you know, if you ever want to have some good laughs, go and see the comments on the first DIY video where I use baby powder and go and watch the video where I 
tried to do DIY, well I did do DIY alcohol inks for the first time, which was a few years ago. I've since redone that video because <laughs> it did need to be redone. And these people were legit in kind of <laughs> saying what they did because <laughs> that video was a hot mess. Okay, so I have added a quarter cup plaster of Paris. Now I'm adding a quarter cup blue, blue, <laughs> glue, wow. I don't know where the blue came from. <clears throat> and so now that I have that, I can add some white paint or, you know, not. Uh, just remember that if you don't add white paint, that will change the consistency because that's going to add a little bit of creamy liquid. So you do need to consider that. Or you could use black paint or you could use whatever paint you want. But I don't have to worry about, oh, is there going to be enough binder in here? Because I just added the glue, and I'd rather just do that than worry about the glue. And I can measure this out, I guess, just so I have an idea. Because technically, this, you know, for the recipe I have, this would be three-quarter cup. So I did a quarter cup plaster Paris filler, and a quarter cup glue binder. And so the three parts is the white paint. So technically, I should do three-quarter cup of this but as you can see I'm barely getting one quarter cup and this was a full thing uh, so that is not going to be as much paint as what I want so I might need to add some water but it depends but it's still going to be plenty white I think because the plaster of Paris is white so I'm not too worried about that and I don't even mind that you know it is a little transparent even if it you know um, I'm not going to be using this as paint if I was using this DIY gesso as white paint, then I would need to be a little bit more concerned. Lots of people have said, well, what if you use clear glue? Will that make a difference for clear gesso? Can you make clear gesso that way? Well, no, because this is clear glue. It goes white, but then when it dries, it's clear, right? So that's not going to help you. And I am going to try and find a try to make some. I haven't ever found a recipe. Um, of the clear gesso or just a little bit kind of transparent but I don't know it's gonna be hard because the filler is usually white so I need to find a filler that will not make it opaque so this is a little bit thicker than what I need but it depends I mean this would be good for um, texture especially with the plaster of Paris right so this would be really good for like a modeling paste type um, gesso But because I, you know, I want it to be a little bit thinner, um, I do like to have some heavy gesso, and this is this is a good this is good if you're looking for heavy gesso. Those those uh, measurements that I just did with only the one quarter, like all same part, one part of each of those, so it was basically a quarter cup of the paint white paint as well. This would be a really good consistency for some heavy gesso. I'm just gonna make it a little bit thinner. Um, here, I'll do this so that you can kind of see. So I'm gonna put it in this cup. So this is a quarter cup, I'm not filling this up. I'm just gonna, just a little bit in the bottom there. I don't wanna add too much. Cause I do, I don't like runny gesso. So I'd rather have thick gesso than runny gesso. And that was plenty. So that's all I needed to add. So I probably added like a teaspoon. It wasn't even a tablespoon, so. I would say a teaspoon, maybe a teaspoon and a half to two teaspoons. I don't even think it was two teaspoons. So that's good. It's still, it's still, it's not totally runny. Um, I'm liking that gesso. So I am going to let this sit um, and come back in a future video, like in a month or so. And I'm going to test out and compare all of these DIY gessos see how they work against each other, see how they compare with each other, and I'm also going to compare them with store-bought gessos. So this one made a little bit less because I didn't add as much white paint. So that only filled up half that jar, whereas my cornstarch one filled it up almost a little bit past three quarters. Okay, so I'm going to stick this on here. And just a very simple, you can make fancy labels if you want. I am not going to do that because I have other things i got to do. DIY gesso 
plaster of Paris, PFP. There you go. So this is, um, of all the DIY gessos so far that I've done, this would be the more expensive one. Still way cheaper than um, store-bought gesso. And if you get it at Michael's or whatever, you can get, this was the only five pounds. You don't need five pounds, but I didn't see a smaller option and I used a 50% off coupon. So I am going to go now and I'm going to let you know how this gesso turns out. I'm going to be back, but I am going to be doing another one with um, clear gesso, hopefully, and with using latex paint. And then I'm going to come back and compare them all. And so make sure you do keep tuned for that. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments below. Bye for now.